It's an honor to be um, able to interview you today, Professor Robert Schreier, about your new book, Profiles of American Presidents in the 20th Century, Marriage and Maladies. So first, tell me about your book. What is the book about? Well, I'm a physician, as you know, and I have a little bit of a hobby uh, in history. And the more I read about presidents and their illnesses, the more I became interested. And it wasn't just physical illnesses, it was mental illnesses and sometimes a combination. And the more I learned, I started lecturing on this and indicating that those physical and mental illnesses frequently impacted the decisions that those presidents made. And they occurred at critical times. They occurred, for example, during the Versailles Treaty with Woodrow Wilson at the end of World War I. And many historians say that that led the decisions made at Versailles contributed to the Second World War. And Woodrow Wilson was very sick then. And then there was World War II. And Franklin Delano Roosevelt died three months later. His blood pressure was totally out of control. He was a very sick man. And that's when Europe was totally divided. And for four decades, the people in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in Hungary, in Romania, and Bulgaria were under communist oppression. And every time I lectured on this, people would say, where's the book? <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, well, I haven't had time, you know, but uh, I finally decided to just focus on the 20th century. And there were 17 presidents in the 20th century. And the more I read, and the more I looked into this, virtually every single one of the presidents had some type of illness, either early in childhood or later in adulthood, and associated with the loss of a loved one, associated with stress, that impacted how they performed and the decisions that they made. But in fairness, what I wanted to do was to give profiles. Here are the major contributions that these presidents made, and, and they all made important pres uh, contributions to our country. But on the other hand, here were some of their problems relative to their mental and physical or combination thereof. And so I've had a good time um, writing the book. I did it um, for my grandchildren. I have 13 grandchildren. I thought that if you are exposed and have an interest in what the presidents did in the 20th century. You know a lot about American history in the 20th century, and that will give them perspective as they live in the 21st century, which is their century, not mine. <laughs> of all 17 presidents, who is your favorite? Can you give me one or two examples? I really can't, can't, uh, because every single one of them had something about their physical or mental or combination thereof that affected how they were as president and the decisions they made. So uh, I became extremely interested in, in all of them. Now, you could focus on what happened in Versailles with Woodrow Wilson. You could focus on what happened in Yalta with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. You can you can focus on a lot of these presidents where their illnesses were, were not revealed to the, uh, to the public. They were really held secretly, and yet they were impacting the um, performance of the president. After Kennedy was assassinated, the 25th Amendment was passed. But when Reagan was unable to really make decisions after he was shot and had, and had surgery, anesthesia, they didn't use it. His people were ready to use it, then they decided not to. So that was a good time to use the 25th Amendment. But what some people have said is that was really against the Constitution, that they didn't use it, that people that are hired by the president shouldn't be making the decision about whether to invoke the 25th Amendment. So we still have a, a in this complex world that's going on, and with the president being the leader of the free world, 
some group that has medical and a non-political group that has medical knowledge should be appointed to make those decisions because what has been shown is that the inner circle of the White House, when they make the, those decisions, they have a conflict of interest. And this is too important to leave it to political decisions when we have a disabled president. And it's been proven that, uh, at least with, uh, with President Reagan, that those decisions were not made by his team, and yet they should have been. And what do you think are three things that people can learn from your book, when people read your book? Well, they'll learn a tremendous, uh, I think it's, it's a tremendous amount of American history. Um, they'll learn that all of these presidents, I think, were great men who did outstanding, made outstanding contributions to this country. But every single one of them had problems because of stress of the office, physical stress. Uh, a lot of them were heavy chain smokers. They developed hypertension, atherosclerosis, had strokes, heart attacks. You know, uh, Woodrow Wilson had four strokes. His last 16 months of his presidency, he was disabled. His wife and his, and his physician were running the country. There were 28 laws passed without his signature during those 16 months that he was disabled. And most of the public didn't realize he was disabled. Franklin Delano Roosevelt at Yalta, dividing up Europe. Uh, no one knew how sick he was. His physician was telling the public, he's very healthy for his age, as healthy as any normal person. He had heart failure, cardiac cachexia. Uh, he, he was uh, had blood pressure totally out of control, and there were no high blood pressure medicines then. So there were so many things that the public didn't know that were potentially endangering our country and other and other countries. So I think they'll learn American history. They'll learn about the illnesses, physical and mental, in uh, in presidencies. Um, and I think it'll make them better citizens. The more you know about your democracy, the better you are, the more interested you'll be, and, and the better citizen you'll be for your country. And that's really why I dedicated it to uh, my grandchildren. Um, if, in order for me to interview you today, and thank you so much to uh, give us information about how this book is important to American citizens and how they can benefit from reading your book. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.